Oh, MMA community, YouTubers, UFC fans, everybody who wants to make money on the Holland Brunson event coming on uh, March 20th. This weekend on Saturday, we got UFC on ESPN 21 event. It's going to be full of great value. This is the theme of this week is value. I've never seen a card with so many uh, favorites that should be bigger favorites or underdogs that should be favorites or just like m big mismatches on like fights that either shouldn't even be taking place or if they did take place. And a lot of it has to do with line movement. Too many casuals and degenerate like uh, underdog chasers, the guys who can't, don't have the knowledge, don't have the time to dedicate to research on these, especially with it being once a week, every week, not unless you don't have a job, unless you don't have a social life, unless you don't have a family. So imagine the normal person who has all of those things, friends, social life, job, family, no way you're going to be able to get all the fights right like we do most of the time. Now, for the, with the exception of one bad event, in, inside the entire Patreon, don't take my word on this. You could just go, for example, $10 is all it takes to verify this. So, and it could cut, this is one of those things that can make you thousands a month. So, what's $10, right? And I'll tell you what, I'll even make it refundable if you don't see what I tell you that you could see for yourself. Inside my folder, there's going to be uh, a category called perfect cards. There's going to be a category called just every event. So if you type in UFC 259, 258, or the date, you can even go off the dates. There's many different ways you can search it manually or just through browsing through folders and clicking on the right one. Every or just type full bet slips. Since the first day Patreon was open, I've always left my full bet slips. These things are private to the selected tiers that are getting them only, but after the event is over, I keep it public and open for anybody inside the Patreon to be able to see it, to reflect back and see who did we bet. The timestamps are there, so there's no lying and denying when the uh, images were loaded when the documents and this and uh, everything was loaded. There's no deny because I my bet slips are not written on the post, so I can't I can't edit or alter it because it's an image. The image is gonna load and it's in everybody's records because when I make a post, it goes directly to your email instantaneously. You get a notification and inside your email, you actually see the actual post itself, the image and the description and the title and everything inside the post is also going to be sent as a duplicate to your emails on file. So anybody who registered, you would know that every time I make a post, you get an email of the post. You don't have to even go into the Patreon. So there's no denying that these people have emails with the times, the dates all there. If you look back, we've had over 20 events, almost 30 events for UFC alone. And in UFC events, we've had only three bet slips. So three weekends, three days only out of over 24 events that were not a profitable week. Now, two of them, we pretty much broke even with the give or take of about a few dollars, nothing major. So we pretty much didn't lose, but we didn't win. And that's one of the beauties of the system. Even on a weird day where something crazy happens, you're protected from losing money. It's just you may not win on those weird, crazy days that nobody could see robberies in addition. It can't even just be a robbery. It would have to be like one of those days where you had a disqualification, a robbery, a bad referee call. Uh, you know, just a lot of things had to have come together to make it a bad day. Anyway, but uh, let's just long story short. I don't. You'll have timestamps. Don't worry. Anybody who doesn't care about this can skip past it. But long story short, here's my money back guarantee. If you spend just even on the lowest tier, ten dollars to enter inside the Patreon, you can go look at the full bet slips. After looking at our best profits from only one of those weeks out of twenty something weeks that we did profit, just take one of them, our best one, or our second best one, or our third best one, because they're usually in the same realm of making four or five times. We've had eight times our money back even on the Hermanson card. We made 
15 times our money back. Khabib card, 20 times our money back. So there have been weeks, but let's just not even take the S out of the usual. Let's just take the average five times, okay? Five times your money back. If you take five times your money back and you take, because there's a folder called betting tips. If you listen to my betting tips and you, you never invest more than 20% of your profits in addition to the consistent amount that you're supposed to bet. So here's one of the other perks. You're getting betting tips on top of my picks, on top of my research, my content. You're also getting betting tips from a guy who's been doing this professionally for years. I've mastered by trial and error and experimentation. I've developed a system by using a lot of different tips and strategies that I'm giving to you guys inside the Patreon. I even have a tutorial, a private segment only Patreons can have access to inside my private segment folder. It's called tutorials. So, but this is a tip that you can just read. In my betting tips folder, there's a lot of tips. This is one of them. If you listen to me, you'll never be able to lose. And the system is bulletproof, because let me explain to you why. Those three weeks, especially because two of them out of those three, we made our money back. But let's just say we lost all of our money those three pro weeks, we didn't profit. Forget it, let's make it four weeks. Let's say four weeks, we didn't profit out of those 20 some odd weeks. Just don't even include those 20 weeks that we did profit. Just take one of those weeks and use that profit amount. So if you bet a thousand and you made 5,000 cashed out, that's 4,000 in profit, right? So those that one event alone, not including the 19 or something other events in addition, that one event would have made you all the money back for three or, I'm sorry, four events that you would have lost your money. As long as you're not the guy who won 3,000 and went in head and put the whole thing right back in on the next week, I can't control that. That's not, that's not my fault and that's not smart and that's going against my instructions. But if you're doing it the right way, the way I instructed it to be done, the way it's supposed to be done, the way that anybody who knows how to be smart would do it, then you would take you just one winning week to make back four losing weeks amount. If you lost everything, if you didn't break even or whatever, if you lost everything. But in the Patreon, do you know why on coming off of our worst week, dude, and I'll explain to you, I don't have too much time on this segment, but there's everybody inside the Patreon has already got the explanation for it. Anybody who's not in there doesn't really deserve it because it's free picks, right? But anyways, um, forgetting about the, the reasons why, but coming off of a week that wasn't our greatest, it was one of our worst weeks ever of my career, actually, of all time in the years. This is, I've never had a, a week so bad. Do you know why only two people canceled memberships? Look at it yourself. Out of 190 people, 177 people, 75 people, something like that. 107, I have the screenshot. Only two people canceled. And these are guys who have not even been in the Patreon for 30 days. So anybody, so zero cancellations for anybody who's been in my Patreon for over 30 days. Now imagine the guy who just got, I sent 66 people. We got 66 people who've been there for over 90 days that received merchandise for being loyal 90 days, three months or over inside the highest tier. They received a complimentary from the fighting guru, a hoodie. These guys have been on the highest tiers, right? So imagine how many weeks those people have to lose to not make profit. It's impossible. It's impossible. There's no way. You would have to go consecutively maybe six months without making without winning one event it's impossible anyway so back on track Let, let's go on uh, this card is a great card uh and i'll explain to you why a lot of these favorites are going up against guys either doing name value or just recency bias they're they're giving them not enough credit. They're valuing it. Here's a per and also because of the line movement. Here's a perfect example. Mo just one example. Okay, Montel Jackson. This is a guy who. Oh wow, he went back up. Okay, so it was minus five fifteen. So that's actually a, a bad example. That's quite the opposite. These are people who know that was the wrong one I was choosing. So let's see. Let's give you guys a different example. Okay, here, perfect. Okay, Macy Chizon. Macy Chizon is a girl who the most recent times we've seen her come in and close even on her last fight. Let me remind you, her last fight 
was her best performance of all time. If you take the numbers that she did in her last fight, let's just say takedowns alone. In her last fight alone, takedowns, she made as much or more than her three previous fights combined. So in one fight, three round fight, she did more takedowns, landed more takedowns than all three of her previous fights before that. That's in takedowns. Now let's talk about significant strikes and total strikes landed. She did more than three, or she did in three fights, she did not do as much, she did about the same amount in her last fight as equivalent to three fights together. Her last performance was one of her best performances, dominated. She fixed one of the things that I was the most worried about. Before that fight, the thing I used to always say about her when I used to watch her fights, if she can only fix her stamina, her durability, like her cardio after the cert, because she has a type of a style that's very taxing on your cardio. After a few rounds, one or two rounds of being so aggressive, and pre she's very similar to a guy who's on this card. Dwight, we'll talk about them later. Dwight Grant. If I break down the Dwight Grant fight, especially because he's going up against a guy who's aged, he's an older guy, he's in his later years at the end of his career, and so is, it's funny that these two fighters, Chazon, Chazon and Dwight Grant, you can describe their approach, their strategy, their techniques, their style to be the exact same, but they're also going up against an opponent who you can say the exact same thing about. So basically, I'm doing a two for one. When I break down the Chai Zone fight, you can say everything that I said about this breakdown, you could just apply it for the Dwight Grant. So now you're, this is cheating, you guys. You're cheating me out of money here, man. You're getting a two for one and I didn't even try to do it for you guys, but I'm just kidding. Uh, so, but yeah, it's the truth. You're, anything I say about this fight applies to that fight. There's not one thing I can say about this fighter or the matchup style together from the opponent to this fighter that I can't say about the Dwight Grant fight. They're both the same thing. They're, okay, so uh, pretty much. I mean, there's a few differences between uh, their opponents, but for the majority, of, I mean, this, they're both at the end of their career, and it results to being the same thing at the end anyway. But uh, anyway, Chai Zan is a girl we closed at minus 700. Her last fight was her best performance, but they didn't know that. Before that, she had come off of a loss and she had come off of dominating, I mean, uh, wins, but they weren't so dominating. She was winning, but not like very dominating fashion. She showed weaknesses, she showed holes in her game, and they were still opening her and closing her up, I'm sorry, at a minus 700. Now, she's shown that she's fixed these holes in her game. She's shown that she can do more than three times the numbers in every area. Not getting tired, not slowing down, not making the same mistakes. And now she's only a minus 200? Barely. She's like, one more bet on her will put her in the minus 100 range. Let's go back. Uh, let's see. Chazon in her last fight closed she was even at a point, some places had her at a minus 1,000, okay? Minus 1,000 coming off of her loss. She had lost, because she's only got one loss, and that was the one before that she had closed at 1,000. So the fight that she was up to minus 1,000 was the first fight after coming off of her loss. That's how much they value this woman. She's such a good prospect. Coming out of a gym most people are very high on, the Fortis gym, from that guy, Sai, 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 whatever his name is. But a lot of people are high on the trainers in the gym. I'm, I personally, I'm, you know, every fighter designed in a different way can belong to some fighters. Like I, the reason why I picked uh, Frey, Jin Yu Frey, to beat Gloria De Paula because she went to a gym that I'm not high on, but because I know what type of a fighter she is, she's not, if you're a fighter like Bevan Lewis, Uriah Hall, that gym is not for you. If you're a fighter like uh, Diego Ferreira, even regardless of him losing against Benil, Benil's a dark horse, he's not the normal type of a fighter, but before the Benil fight, he was on a tear, unstoppable, right? Fortis is a lot of uh, reason for that. Another person, Frey, because she doesn't need one thing that they're not good at at that gym is 
strategy, IQ, developing a game plan. They're terrible at it. With all due respect, I like the people, I like them, but that's not what they're meant for. If you're going there to get advice on how to win fights, you don't know how to. You're not a savvy uh, veteran. You're not going to do well. But if you already have natural good IQ and reflex, and you know how, you don't need somebody to scream what to do and on your corner. You're going to be fine because those people work really hard. I like their physical aspect of their training so they can really mold someone into being a really good fighter after being transitioned into that gym it could be a good thing for some fighters and that's why i picked frey frey was the perfect example she just needed to work on some things in a physical aspect she has the experience she's been doing it for long enough she used to be a champion in her former day, uh, organization so this is a girl who doesn't need to be told what to do in the ring she knows how to handle it herself inside the ring she just needed to, to work on her physical her confidence which is what translates into getting wins if you're physically stronger your cardio is good and you're confident everything else would be would be falling into place so that's what happened with her that's why she, if you looked at my post on the fray i even did screenshots and put it on twitter we had a three page pretty much a three paragraph explanation on why she was going to win i even made a comparison that santos versus jillian robertson jillian being the more technical better fighter striker or i'm sorry uh, ground specialist she would still lose at the uh ground game war because of the strength discrepancy in this type of a fight strength is very important who's going to win the dominating positions so we predicted it and we cashed in. I made even a parlay that was paying nine to one, another one that was paying five to one, that had Frey as a big underdog in there. So we were happy to cash in on that. Uh, but forget that week, let's talk about this week. Macy Chizon is an example of good value. We have her at minus 200 even, almost minus 100 range. So she's closer to the minus 100 than the minus 300. She's at an even exact minus 200. Some sites even have her like sport bet has her at minus 196. So there's some places like bet online has her at minus 194. So there are places that have her even in the minus 100 range for a girl who closed at minus 1000, minus 600, minus 700 in her previous fights. She's all this is the best value we've seen on her in a long time. So, and it's during a time that she's made her biggest improvements against a girl who's not going to... Let's look at Macy Chizon's uh, most recent uh, uh, fights, okay? This is a girl, if we examined her closely, Macy Chizon is pretty much just showing up for paycheck. She's not getting any better, and she's actually getting worse. If you looked at her... Hey, let me give you an example. In the Wik in the Rocky fight, her, her last fight against Raquel Pennington. Let me find this. Hold on. Her last fight against Raquel. They call her uh, Rocky. Oh, I know why I couldn't find that. I'm in the wrong event. Sorry, be patient with me for a second. Anyways, let's do this. If you go to the third round, the final round, this is when she gets the and let the only way you should bet on M the underdog in this fight, if you want to bet on Marion, you got to be certain that she will win every round because the judges, the UFC marketing machine will not take a girl who's practically almost undefeated, held a good account of herself and her only loss was against a girl who's respectable and there's no shame in losing. And let me also tell you something, because I'm on a big platform, I'm growing, I can't really be very open about this, but there's a reason she lost that fight against Landsberg. It wasn't because I cannot, I wish we were able to talk candidly and open and without being by people wouldn't judge and take things the wrong way. If it wasn't such a sensitive uh, type of a uh, world we live in where people are like very quick to judge and be like, I made a comment some time ago that in no way, shape or form was it anywhere near being sexist or racist i'm not a racist i'm not a sexist but somebody viewed it so that just goes to show that this if i if i were to be honest with the reason why she lost that fight there's a good reason she lost that fight most of the times she would have never lost that fight but i have information and a reason for it that i don't want to share 
and um, you, you, it's one of those things where it's just it doesn't it wouldn't be smart of me to say it on a platform of this size people would take it the wrong way and uh, it's not professional maybe so I don't want to get into those murky waters and gray areas just take my word on it this girl could be undefeated and she held either way she held she held a good account of herself and this circumstances will not be the same in this fight as in that fight when she had made her only loss by decision okay so since then things are different a lot of things have changed she's even improved a lot of things as well that are very important in her game and she'll go back on being uh on her tear uh and that one loss will be forgotten because it won't tarnish her legacy so in a close fight unless you get 10 8 rounds and especially in the area that's the most important which is the final rounds the judges always look at the last round most important than the first and the second round how the fight would have gone on if it didn't come to an end is a big factor in how they weigh in the scorecards so if you're ending the fight in a dominating position and you're looking to be getting better as the opponent's looking to get worse, that holds a lot of merit and, and, and water inside the, you know, the, you have a much more better chance of winning the decision than somebody who was just looking dominant in the first round but started to slow down. It doesn't count. The first round doesn't count as much as the last round. And a girl like Mariana is the type that very quickly will fatigue and fade away in the later rounds. So unless not only are you sure she can win the majority of the rounds, you better be sure that she can win the final round as well. And that's when this girl is going to be the most dangerous. She's way bigger, way more better cardio. She's the younger, hungrier, stronger fighter. And, uh, you know, she's, she's a little bit less technical but she's more dangerous. For example, if you took the Raquel Pennington third round fight and you replaced Raquel Pennington with uh, especially this new version of Macy Chazon, if you replaced Macy Chazon in the fight with Raquel Pennington in the third round, Macy would have guaranteed 100,000%, not 90%, not 80%, not 110%, 1,000% sure she would have finished Marion. Marion would have gotten, she would have not made it out of that round. It would have never gone to decisions. Not just because this girl throws, she has a sense of uh, urgency. She knows when to when to capitalize when an uh, opponent, even the judge, I'm sorry, the commentators were saying, I don't think Raquel or Rocky knows how hurt her opponent Mar Marion is. He even had to say that a couple of times because she was she was not capitalizing on moments that she could have finished the fight. But forgetting that, just other there was too many opportunities, and she was just so fatigued. It was available to you. Anybody could have finished her. And this girl doesn't throw tip tap jabs, even though she's not the most powerful. She's not the most technical. She doesn't throw pillow fist she throws out she's the tony ferguson of the old the old tony ferguson the guy who everybody used to know as if you get into a fight with tony ferguson you're going to come out of that fight win lose or draw looking like you got run over by a train or hit with a baseball bat a uh, hundred thousand times she's that she's the equivalent of that i mean maybe not to, as a high of an um you know level but she does like to use elbows and knees a lot. She's very dangerous in her uh, strategy. She doesn't have to have power or precision because she hurts you with uh, her elbows and sh her sharp elbows and her knees, which are very damaging. These are, it's like having a uh, open, a sawed off shotgun. You don't have to aim really good. You don't have to have a perfect spot to land. A, it's an open Type of, you could just fire it out and it, wherever it lands it's going to do damage that's how she fights like a like a sawed off shotgun is how sh she throws her hits and that's very damaging and people don't usually they they don't respond well to that especially not in women's mma all right guys so the value is great on a girl like that who, against an opponent like this she's only on one loss and her opponents uh, on a nine and six. She's got a nine and six record, one draw, 
or no contest, I think. So uh, nine and six, she's on a three fight losing streak. So one is on the decline as the other one is on the incline, looking better than ever as the other one's looking. So they're both going in opposite directions. Minus 200, especially with how I make my bets. I'm going to make minus 200 into plus 200 on a safe parlay. If you duplicate my bet slips, Macy is going to be only in plus money. Besides one or two of them, no, one bet only, she'll be at minus money. The rest of my bet slips, we're going to get plus money for Macy. I'll show you. Everybody in my Patreon already knows why and how I do this. I do it every week on, on all my bets. I find you a way to make a minus person into, I did this and every card, and we've even had cards where we didn't miss one bet, or the Patolo event, the event with the Patolo fight was 39 out of 40, or the Hermanson fight was 40 out of 47, the Khabib fight was 50 out of 50, not even one bet didn't cash in, actually one prop bet, but that was like one that we didn't even put any, even a full unit on, it was 49 out of 50 bets, actually no, 50 out of 51 bets cashed in. So this is one of those weeks, I'm going to guarantee you almost that we're not going to have hardly any bets not cash in. Almost all of our bets will cash in, if not all of our bets. This is a perfect card for that type of a percentage of accuracy. I can put my reputation on it. All right, guys. And uh, now let's go back. So my fades of the week, or my one of my fades of the week is going to have to be not just Trevor. I got two of them now. Trevin Giles and Macy Chai's own opponent, uh, Marianne, for whatever her name is. She's she's at 40-something years old on a three-fight losing streak. She's not getting any better, and her opponent's a worst-style nightmare for her. It couldn't be a worst opponent-style matchup for her. Somebody who's going to have non-stop pressure, who's not going to let her select her shots, not going to let her be able to be moving her and be light on her feet, and she's going to keep her backpedaling. Imagine a girl who has to backpedal and fight off her, her back feet and not be able to select the shots and be used inside of a clinch with her. Like a, she does a very, very a good uh, t like a Thai uh, clinch where she wraps her arms and pushes. And a girl is so big putting her weight down on you with her hands around your neck. How, what are you going to do? How are you going to hurt her? You got to be able to, and she's not good at takedowns. She's not good at takedown defense. So if she wants to get, take, if she wants to take it down to the, if for any reason she starts to see some glimpse of success on the feet, she'll take her right down. She'll be able to outpower her and put her through to the ground. She's not, her takedown defense is not that good. It's actually very bad. And her get up game is not that good either. So I, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't see a path to victory for her at all, especially in the later rounds and especially with the marketing machine and the uh, referees. And I'm sorry, the judges are going to be in more favor of give, if it's a close fight. They're going to make more. It'd be making more sense for them not to tarnish a girl who's just starting her career as opposed to a girl who's at the end of her career. Also, this fight's been, they were supposed to book this fight in UFC 184, fight, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So this has been something that they've been prepared for in a, for a long time. And just like a Kamzat, similar to like a Shemaev, this girl is very coachable. As a trainer myself, I used to, I can tell when a person is easy to train. This is a girl who listens to orders. She's not a type that goes against, she's not like a Bobby Green, who you, you can tell him a million times to do something and he'll do the opposite. She's very coachable. In between rounds, if her coaches tell her to do something, she'll do it. No questions asked. Whether she likes it or agrees with it, she'll do it. And that makes a big difference in a fight. You're pretty much uh, cheating. It's a sense of cheating. You got, you're fighting with more than one person. So Marion is going to be fighting against her, her trainers, her corner men, her sparring partner. Everybody who's on her corner that day is going to be there to help her and th have an uh, value for for her in assisting her to get the win okay guys uh let's give you now my underdog of the week my underdog man i got more than one but i, I don't know how to pick my favorite i guess i'll go with the one with some of the best value because we got to make up for quality quantity with quality i'm going to give you i told you guys this last week i'm a man of my word i'll give you more fights are less fights, but these fights will be out of respect for my paying patrons. I got to put the pay 
private segments. If you're a $10 patron, you're gonna get a private segment not in YouTube. If you're a $50 patron, you're gonna get more segments than the $9 patrons. If you're $100 or more, you get the full breakdowns and all the private segments. All Oh, by the way, let me tell you, outside MMA yesterday was great. We went 100%. Let me tell you, I live, there's a reason I do this. This is my profession, I picked this for a reason. In walking distance, I live two minutes, no, five minutes away in a car, one minute or two minutes away in walking distance. I live five minutes away from my sports book casino, the biggest casino inside my town. I live in the capital right now. I'm vacationing kind of, but I live here too. This is my second home. Uh, so where I live is minutes of walking distance from the casino. The bets that we made yesterday, for the first time, I made parlays. I usually don't do parlays in NBA and NHL because they pay well enough. My valued plays are like two to one. Go look at my posts. Go. I even put a screenshot in Twitter and Instagram. We went 100% in H NHL, 100% in NBA. Money line and parlays. My two parlays in each organization cashed in more than two times our money and there's a reason why nhl if you go back from the beginning of my uh patreon i've only missed there's only been one day i got an nhl pick wrong mind you, i've gone days where i made five or six picks and since then since the day i started my patreon if you look at my nhl folder i've never had more than one maybe two but i think it was only one wrong ever yes yeah, so i'm very confident I, i'm very selective on which teams i do a lot of research so in my nba picks it's a little bit more scary because nba is not consistent i was so confident that for the first time ever i gave them a parlay instead of just single bets and guess what Today I walked in, I cashed in. So don't tell me that the Patreon, just for the freebies, the outside MMA picks alone, it's not worth it. This is what we cashed in on yesterday's outside MMA. I don't, I recommend it because I'm on a different level. I don't expect people who are just starting in the Patreon and I don't want to be responsible. So I tell them never to bet more than 20% of their betting pot. So if in the week you're only betting $1,000 a week on UFC, never bet more than $200 in total for the week on outside MMA. So the uh, rules don't apply to me because I'm not in the Patreon. I'm not somebody who's new. I have a different level of threshold where I am in gambling is different than where you are because I've been doing it for a longer time. My betting pot is different. Just alone, guys. This is what we cash in. The the, the bet slips and everything, the time stamps, they're in my Patreon. For $9, you can see it for yourself. And go look at the comments. The patrons were so happy about it. They said great picks. We have comments of people saying good picks. We, we did a great job on outside MMA yesterday. This alone, guys, this alone, these are, I don't know if you can see this or not, but these are $50 bills. Each one of these, 70, this here is equivalent to, if I go to a currency exchange, or if I go to the airport, the airport will do it as well. This 70 right here is equivalent to US dollars, $100. So this right here, is more than ten thousand dollars in american cash in us dollars this is close to about twelve thousand dollar range about thirteen thousand dollars if you're exact in us dollars if i transferred it to us dollars but this is about ten thousand no about nine ten thousand i can't I, I didn't count it all but from outside mma that's not even our main bread and butter and the reason why the fees are so low is because I've never changed them. I started off the lowest fee possible so that I can show people what it's worth. And the plan was to increase it. I haven't increased it yet. So good for you guys who are grandfathered in because the rates will never change. All right. Outside MMA, we'll talk about another time in the patrons. I'm putting out my daily picks every day. We, we usually do very well because they're very good paying picks. Two to one, sometimes more. But in a parlay, they're four to one sometimes. Especially if you took my NHL and NBA and combined them together, it was paying like seven, eight to one. Almost nine to one, actually. Eight, eight point something to one. Okay, so Trevin Giles versus Roman Delizzi. Let's talk to Roman Delizzi. I hate to burst your bubble, guys. 
As much as I like him, I'm a fan of his style. For betting, it's a nightmare. This guy takes chances for nothing. He doesn't, he doesn't, he, he, if you have money on him in his fights, you're going to be very nervous. He doesn't fight to the best abilities and he makes fights closer than necessary. He's kind of like a muscle head, like those meat heads who are like are jocked, who like to like show off. He does that too much and that's dangerous with money. Look what happened to Anderson Silva versus Chris Weidman. He paid for that, right? And a lot of people have paid for that. There's bloop, you can go through hours of footage of people who learn, uh, Who's that guy that was winning against Cub Swanson, Daniel Pineda? He paid for that. So it's very, very uh, risky. And his head movement is terrible. For a guy who does that, I wish he had better head movement or he knew how to roll with the punches good. He doesn't know how to roll with the punches and his head movement is terrible. He's not that chinny, but I've seen him get wobbled by lesser men. And Giles got, he doesn't have much, his IQ is bad. And one thing I don't like about Giles, Trevin Giles, in his last fight, he had two past the victory. One of them was guaranteed. Trevin Giles had an opportunity to win the fight in a way where it was not even gonna be close. Nobody could rob him. Nobody can say there was even a chance that he didn't win maybe even 10, eight rounds because Bevan Lewis had one of his worst performances ever he was doing so bad in that fight in every aspect from his movement he was circling the wrong way he was throwing one punch at a time it was so predictable that anybody can time it and just knock him out so easily he kept getting knocked down and knocked down and knocked down his wrestling takedown defense was to everything he couldn't have it was one of the worst performances ever in my life i've ever seen I, and he's the guy that fights out of Fortis, like I was just saying about the camp, Fortis MMA, who got, who does have good people out of that gym, but not everybody. It won't work for everybody. So, but Trevin Giles made it such a close fight that if it wasn't for the knockout at the end of the round, and this is why he lost the fight to GM3. GM3 Gerald Mishard, a guy who's been getting dominated and he lost in like one punch against Kamzat Chemayev, who got beaten so easily by. His other opponent as well, a guy who's a fade of if I've ever seen one, beat him. He didn't just he, he made him look so bad because he it's not just that he's a, he's not a full time fighter. He's got one foot out the door. He's he's a part time fighter because he's a full time police officer. He does uh, he he does another job more more dedicated to his other job. So that's a big problem for him. But his choice selective making is very bad. He had so many opportunities to not take risks and not make it a close fight. Instead, he chose the option that was less work. He didn't have to work as hard. And it was more more easier to just uh, stand outside and try to headhunt. He, he was looking for a knockout punch and not throwing enough volume, not using his wrestling, not getting control time, ring control. Down. He made it so risky that there's a good chance because the numbers were in the opposite direction. Technically, on paper, Trevin Giles was losing. Significant strikes were in the favor of Bevan Lewis. And you're in the third round and you're still not showing urgency. You're still headhunting. Thank goodness it worked for him. But if it didn't work, if he didn't get that knockout punch, if he was able to get back up, there's no telling how that fight would have gone. And it was a fight that he could have... The guy was making so many mistakes, such big holes. Anybody... Gerald Mishart would have finished him even. So, like, I don't know. I can't bet on him. I don't like... And he's a guy that if he decided to want to do the right thing, if he, wanted, if he wasn't being lazy and showing bad IQ, he can ruin your night as well. So he's a bad guy to bet against or for. And his opponent doesn't help by being a showboat. A guy who doesn't want to fight to his best of abilities. A guy who, in a position where he was dominating his opponent, the lat John Allen, how many times did he try to go and lose position for trying to go for a weird, like a, a, a foot ankle lock or submission that was not working for him repeatedly? His opponent was showing that he can get out of it. He knew how to get out of it. He knew how to get himself out of that position. Six times, five times, he kept trying the same one over and over and over. And every time he tried that submission, he lost the position. He lost the dominant position. He didn't get the ground and pound that could have got the fight stopped and racked up points. Another guy doesn't show good IQ, takes unnecessary risks 
I don't know how to bet this guy. So, uh, I mean, I, I do know how to bet him in a better way, but he's not going to be a major part of our night. A lot of people are high on him. This is another opportunity where it could turn into what I told you guys was going to happen to Rodolfo Vieira or the hype train against Joaquin Buckley. You don't want to believe in the tooth fairy. This is one of those situations. Don't be that guy who believes in fairy tales. He's undefeated or whatever. Well, I get it. Like he's got, he's looking great. But there's going to be a guy that comes around, a fluffy Hernandez. To there's going to be a, a fluffy to Rodolfo for for this guy. Somebody's going to fluffy him in the future. I guarantee it. His days are numbered. It just I met, if he doesn't fix his his holes in his game at this level. You can't afford that. He's at the lower stages right now, but once he starts to climb up the rankings, there's going to be a point when he gets to the top contenders where they're going to just make a field day out of him. They're going to put him out in the first round. He's going to be annihilated. So I don't want to be the guy who bet on him until that happened. I want, I'll want. i be the guy who waits until he makes improvements and then want to bet on him because he's got potential. He just needs to clean it up. And he's got to remember this is not the D leagues. This is not the D-Leagues. He's, he's not in the regional scene anymore. Those mistakes, those things that he was doing, are not. those are unforgivable at this level. All right, guys. Um, what else? What else? We've got a fade of the week. We've got, actually, I gave you two fades of the week. I kind of gave you two predictions at once at the same time because of the uh, Dwight Grant having an opponent that's very similar. This guy is way too patient. Leonardo Santos is very old at the end of his career right now. But even if he was in his prime, this is the worst style matchup. He's going to get annihilated. This guy's way too patient. And a counter striker is just the perfect style matchup that a guy like Dwight Grant can strive off of. He, The worst nightmare style matchup for a guy like Dwight Grant is that somebody who's forward pressure, aggressive, and quick to try to get a finish. Like similar to the only person I remember seeing who had some success and early on it was uh, when he had a couple of submission attempts that it looked like they were gonna be successful, but that's how good. I love when I see a fighter go through adversity and show that he can battle back and make good decisions. He did the side mount transition, he, he rolled on his back. He did against the guy who's got 21 finish. Derek Miner is a guy with 20 finishes in the first round. Submissions his is like 99% of his wins came by submissions all in the first round. He even was a big underdog against TJ Laramie, if I'm not mistaken, and he got a finish against a huge favorite. Well, against Dwight Grant, he put him in the same positions as he put those guys in. He did everything perfect. He showed that he's not a guy who doesn't have good IQ. He's got good strength, good power, good heart, good cardio, good pressure, who's got good volume, who's in every way around. He's just such a great fighter. He's got everything you need in a guy who's who you could trust with your money. And uh, his opponent is just the perfect style. He's going to he's going to be able to he's for the first time I think that he's going to really show off his skills. This is going to be a fight where he has a very dominating performance. He's going to and I think that's why he's one of the bigger favorites of the card if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, no, actually look at that. Look at the value on this guys. He's the same exact value as Chaizon, minus 200. Do you know what a guy like me, I'm the guy who took minus 1800 for Shevchenko, the bullet against Maya, and I made it plus 275. In a parlay, we cashed in a plus 275 bet in a parlay. That's like plus 800. We put her in a, uh, I think it was account with Figueredo and stuff. So even more than plus 275. We turned it into like plus 800. Imagine what I could do with a minus 200 only. This is easy money, guys. This is a great card to make some money in. Okay, my underdog of the week is Don Tail Mays. A lot of guys used to see him as a fade, as a guy who uh, is not trustworthy and my the same reason why you guys see like Carlos Felipe as a great boxer, but I told you he's one of the worst boxers I've ever seen. And, and in his next fight, you saw the referee kept warning him to close his hands. He was slapping, not even boxing. It was such a bad performance that they had to rob his opponent so he can get the win because everybody knows his opponent won it. If you look at the other judges outside the ring judges, 99% all of them besides one judge 
So like 29 out of 30 outside judges scored the fight dominant. It wasn't even close. It was 30 to 20. He won two and a half out of three rounds. So only half of one or some moments of one round, second round, when he hurt his eye. After he hurt his eye, Felipe had won some moments against Tafa. Tafa for the remainder of the fight, two and a half rounds in every field, like kicks, especially 15 to zero, 100% accuracy, significant strikes, control time. There wasn't one field he lost against uh, Felipe in, except maybe body punch. I don't remember, but it was something really silly that you wouldn't even consider to have any influence over the judges' scores, right? But the most important things, control time, significant strikes, leg kicks, head kicks, total strikes, all that was in the favor of um, Tafa, but they still gave him the, they still gave him the bad end of the decision. So anyway, and uh, so I see things different. I always knew Felipe was not the best fighter or boxer, but most people thought he was good. This is another situation. Tafa, I'm mean, sorry, uh, What's his name? Uh, Taitu Sava. Although I made great money. If you look at my tickets on Twitter, I posted them before the event started on the Khabib fight. But that was against Stefan Struve. The the Sky Tower, the, the, the big guy, Stefan Struve. That guy is different. That guy, I'll fade him over any most of other people. That's different. But before the Stefan Struve fight, he was getting... He was on a bad down, he was on a slope going down. He's not looked good at all. His cardio is the only, the only reason it even held up. You'll see some people are gonna argue, oh, but he went three rounds and won against Arlovsky. I think actually Arlovsky what made that, he made some silly mistakes. He's at the end of his career. There's a reason why he lost that fight. Anybody else probably would like, if you put him against like a Bozer or a guy who even Arlovsky had beat, he would have had no chance. The only reason why he's got enough cardio to make it into the third round sometimes, or that only that was his first time that he made it into the outside the first round was against Arlovsky, is because he doesn't throw for half. He's like a Yoel Romero, where half the time he's just sitting around waiting for you to do something. He doesn't throw. He explodes in moments and in intervals. So half the fight, he's just sitting around doing nothing. That's the only reason he's got cardio to go into the second, third round. If he fought entire rounds, nonstop fighting, he would be annihilated. By the second round, he'd be a potato. He'd be just a punching bag or a sitting duck. He's got, but Mays is the way more athletic guy. He can go those rounds and still be dangerous. Not even just good, but dangerous. In the later rounds, he's showing to still have signs of being capable of not just being able to be light on his feet and bounce around and but he's still dangerous he can still throw with some ill intent and that's dangerous for a guy who's losing his cardio who's now very uh stationary who's very uh stiff or very uh uh what's the word i'm looking for on their feet um Heavy on their, I don't know, I can't think of the word, but it's dangerous. People get dropped very easily like that. So I could see this being a late finish, but for the value, we're getting Dantel Mays, who has seemed to be improved drastically in his most recent performance. He's, he's made a big difference. He keeps a high guard. I like that he keeps his hands up all the time, which is great because... Uh, Tai Tusava, many people don't know. Before he was a UFC fighter, he had started a career in uh, boxing. So his boxing, but he wasn't that good at it. So it's not that impressed. It's nothing to brag and use uh, in in making a decision because he wasn't. I think he had a really bad record as well. It wasn't a good record, if I'm not mistaken. It was like a fi uh, 500 maybe record, or not even close to a 500 record. It was like four wins, three losses, something weird like that. I can't remember, but. Uh, either way, he wasn't a great boxer, and uh, he does have, you know, the capabilities of getting a knockout, but it's very unlikely, and if it doesn't happen in the first round, so if you want a live bet after the first round, he'll look, it may even give you more value on his opponent, because his opponent's 
Well, actually, probably not. After you see in the first round, we still may see uh, Tai Tusava losing immediately to him. This guy's looking better and better, and he's going to be the more athletic and the way more volume. Volume is the key. So it wouldn't surprise me that even if he doesn't get the knockout or finish him in the later rounds, the one who's going to be throwing twice the volume, maybe even three times the volume. You, let me remind you, Cyril Gain. A world beater, a future contender, a guy who could be a champion one day, undefeated. We hardly see him do this, right? He tried to keep taking... This is the older version of Dante Mays. In his debut fight, he tried to take him down three or four times. He didn't even... He knew. This is smart. Unlike Trevin Giles. See? Cyril Gain is a guy you could trust. He knew that in the scorecards... The, with robberies, the politics, with the Vegas betting, people wanting to ruin parlays. They know Cyril Gain is aware of the fact that you cannot leave it in the judges' scores and you cannot make it a close fight. And a guy, if you keep a guy like Dante Mays on his feet, you can never count him out. Not only because of knockout, but because of volume. We don't know how the judges are going to score it. If he, if it's a close fight in volume, maybe the guy who is the one controlling the ring, who is the one moving forward instead of backwards, is going to be the guy who wins, even with less strikes. It's happened so many times. So we saw a guy who, even against Rosenstruck, never even attempted a takedown hardly. He barely tried to take that fight to the ground ever. And he wasn't feeling in danger. He was willing and content to keep it in a kickboxing realm against a guy who came from a kickboxing organization and style. That's his main bread and butter. I mean, his main go-to style. He didn't even try to take him down as much as he was trying to take Dante Mays down. Even in the last few seconds, the reason why he got that desperation submission is he didn't want it to go to the scorecards. So Cyril Gain with seconds left of a fight that he was winning and dominating still felt the need to have to submit Dante Mays so he didn't want it to go to the scorecards. And at the plus money that we're getting him at, it, win, lose, or draw. Nobody can tell me a guy who's lost three of his last four. Let me see. Hold on. First, let's see. Dante Mays is at um, plus. Oh, so his money is coming in, I think. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, he, he went from plus 205 to plus 185. So you may want to move on this one ASAP. Uh, but anyway, uh, Tai to Sava, minus 225. And let me remind you, okay? Uh, the guys who he has beat are guys who shouldn't still be fighting or are not very high level. So uh, looking back now, let's go see um, Tai to Sava. I'm not mistaken. I know before his before his win against Stefan Struve. And can you believe this is the oh okay good. The co-main event is Gilles, Gillespie versus Rydell. And this is the one before that. So this is on the main card. It's the Second to last, or third to last. Uh, there's this fight and two more, or one more before the main event. All right, so, uh, yeah, uh, Dante Mays was looking actually pretty good, even in his, let me remind you, in his Rodrigo Nascimento fight. That's another fight where the guy felt the need to have to submit him. So was, there's a reason why these guys are trying to submit Dante Mays. Rodrigo had to submit him because it was not looking very good. It was a risky, dangerous fight for him and Rodri. And anytime, like I said, you keep any, he's always going to be in the fight. Even to the last second of the fight, he's going to have a chance. So you don't want to keep an athletic big guy like Dante Mays in the game. You got to try to take him out ASAP. And Taitu Sava is not a submission specialist. So let's look at uh, Dante Mays' losses. He's Never, um, he's never lost by decision. His two, his three losses were, and one of them was like a no contest. So he's never lost a decision. Okay, in twelve fights, zero times has he ever lost by decision. He's only been knocked, considered. A, uh, let's see. Okay, the only time he's ever been KO'd was, 
Let's see. It wasn't even a one, see, it wasn't a one punch knockout. It was a stoppage. It was a, it was a, it was something, but it was against a guy who's more, more technical. Like Alan Crowder is more, he doesn't have to just rely on power. He was a little bit more, he's more of a technical type of a fighter. He doesn't have to rely on just getting lucky. But uh, Alan Crowder uh, is not the same type of a fighter. I'm not concerned. And that was only one time. So I can't expect the, you can't call somebody chinny or, something, or nothing like that. He can take a good hit. I've seen him take good hits and not even get phased by them. So he's far from chinny. Dantel May is, I could see him even eating a big punch and still coming back forward and going forward from it. So uh, I, I like him as an underdog. There's more underdogs on this card similar, but because of the value, I would give him, the, I would give you guys this one over the other ones. There are some other underdogs that are more trustworthy and maybe safer. And a fight like this on the, on the heavyweights, like on the level of these big boys, I don't want, these are not good for, and if you look at my betting tips folder, I don't want to sell my Patreon short. They pay for this stuff, but this, there's a reason why these fights are not a major part of our bet slips. But, uh, so uh, betting it in parlays and making it a big wager or important part of your night is not very wise. So these are fights that are very similar to uh, women's MMA or just the guys coming off of injuries or layoffs, they're risky in the same exact way for different reasons. All right, so I gave you my underdog. I gave you my fate of the week. Uh, I'm glad that we were able to uh, give you some extra uh, picks and uh, confidence going into this week. There's a lot of money. If there was ever a time you were considering to join, I'll do you. Here's a guarantee. If you're in the gold or the ultimate tier only, the higher two tiers only. I'll give you a money back guarantee. If you only duplicate my bet slips. So if you don't make your own bets, don't change the bets. If you just duplicate my bet slips and you don't make profit. If you have a losing week where even if you break even. If you break even or you lose money. I will refund 100% of your membership for the month. So you get a free month. You can still stay and get, get the perks of the membership, but I'll refund it back to you. So I won't cancel your membership. I'll just give you back your money and you can still keep the perks of the membership if this event does not turn into profits. And I don't just take one or two fights. I never put my eggs in one basket. I'm gonna give you the bets on pretty much every fight on here. If we don't include a fight, it'll be like maybe one woman's MMA or two women's MMA fights. And even those, I expect to probably include them. We're gonna have a full bet slip finally. Unlike last week where one column would have been more bets than my full bet slips. Last week, we had 20 bets only in total when we usually have 40 to 50 all together, but we don't make big bets. We make five, $10, $2, $3. And but it turns into thousands of profit. If you have a lot of money though, and